when the Roman soldier enrolled in service to the state, he swore a military oath known as the Sacramentum, originally to the Senate and Roman people, later to the general and the emperor. The Sacramentum stated that he would fulfill his conditions of service on pain of punishment up to and inclusive of death. Discipline in the army was extremely rigorous by modern standards, and the general had the power to summarily execute any soldier under his command. Polybius divides the punishments inflicted by a commander on one or more troops into punishments for military crimes, and punishments for unmanly acts, although there seems to be little difference in the harsh nature of the punishment between the two classes. Punishments for crimes. Fustuarium, or bastinado, following a court-martial sentence for desertion or dereliction of duty, the soldier would be stoned, or beaten to death by cudgels, in front of the assembled troops, by his fellow soldiers, whose lives had been put in danger. Soldiers under sentence of fustuarium who escaped were not pursued, but lived under sentence of banishment from Rome. Polybius writes that the fustuarium is also inflicted on those who steal anything from the camp, on those who give false evidence, on young men who have abused their persons, and finally on anyone who has been punished thrice for the same fault. Pecunaria multa, fines or deductions from the pay allowance. Flogging in front of the century, cohort or legion. Demanding sureties, including the retaking of the military oath known as the sacramentum. For treason or theft, the punishment would most probably be being placed in a sack of snakes and thrown into a nearby river or lake. Another punishment in the Roman military only applied to people involved in the prison system. This rule was that if a prisoner died due to the punishment inflicted by Roman legionaries, unless he was given the death penalty, then the leader of the troops would be given the same punishment, citation needed. It would seem that in the later empire independent commanders were given considerable latitude in the crimes they chose to punish and the penalties they inflicted. According to the Historia Augusta III, the future emperor Aurelian once ordered a man who was convicted of raping the wife of the man on whom he had been billeted to be attached to two trees drawn together so that when the restraining ropes were cut they sprang apart and the unfortunate victim was torn asunder. The author of the Vita Aureliani comments that Aurelian rarely punished twice for the same offense. However, even by Roman standards his justice was considered particularly harsh. As always with the Historia Augusta, one takes this story with a pinch of salt and either wonders what 4th century point the author was attempting to make of a 3rd century incident or whether he merely attributed to Aurelian a good story that seemed appropriate to that man's reputation. On the other hand, the imposition of cruel and unusual penalties to maintain discipline among the brutalized soldiery in the chaotic conditions of the North European provinces in the mid 3rd century was a necessity for the maintenance of effective command. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment if you like contents like this.